Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and sharing my first impressions review of some brand new Kevin O'Quan pieces. All three of the products that I have to share with you today were sent to me complimentary to review from Kevin O'Quan. The video isn't sponsored in any way. They simply sent me the product and asked for an honest opinion. So here I have the Emphasize Eye Design Palette. This is the shade As Seen In. I also have the Glass Glow Face and the Glass Glow Lip, which all three of these looked stunning on their website. I believe all three of these are new for summer. As you can see, I have absolutely nothing but skincare on my face, so let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and primed my eyelids with a little bit of Chanel concealer and I blended it out with my Sigma Tapered Kabuki brush because I've been sitting here debating whether or not to start with eyes or face and I think the safest bet is just to go ahead and start with the eyeshadow palette just in case I get a lot of fallout. So I'm going to unbox this Emphasize Eye Design palette. As I mentioned, I have the shade As Seen In. It is available in four different shades. So there are four different palettes. I'm sort of ripping the box by accident, let's see. And then when you open it up, you have this little protector here, which we'll take out. And this is pretty cool. So there are five powder eyeshadows. You get this metallic cream eyeshadow. This is the cream foil. And then you have a really decent size mirror. And up at the top it says, Beauty Belongs to the Brave. This is nice, I just noticed this. So it has the shade names. Rose Gold is the name of the cream foil. And then you have Ballet, Blush, Rose, Amethyst, and Sangria. So these are more kind of mauve purple tones. You have more neutrals down here. So you have a pretty good range of shades, you know, for a five pan palette. I think that's pretty good. It looks like this one, this must be amethyst, is metallic, but the rest are matte. This one has a slight bit of shimmer, sangria, teeny, teeny, tiny bit. I would say it's maybe a little bit luminous, but it's mostly matte. So you have one metallic, basically four mattes, and then you have the cream. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by swatching these with my fingers. Of course, when you swatch with your hands versus playing with a brush on the eyes, it is totally different. But the one benefit is that I'll be able to kind of get a good feel for the texture and the formula. Ooh, really nice. So I will just want to kind of swatch like that. I don't know if you can really see. I will show a close up. It's really soft, very smooth, silky, and really pigmented. Now let's create a look using these colors. I'm really glad I swatched them on my hand so I kind of have an idea of what I'm gonna do now. I think we have to use this amethyst purple because it's just really pretty and it's obviously kind of a standout in what would otherwise be an all neutral matte palette. And I also really wanna go in with this cream foil eyeshadow. So I think I'm going to start with a fluffy brush. I brought you in a little bit closer you could, so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna take this medium intensity shade right in the middle, I believe it's called Rose, yes. And tap off the excess. I love this giant mirror in the compact that is very convenient. And I'm gonna go directly in the crease. Next, I'm going to take the Rose Gold Cream Foil Eyeshadow and I'm gonna apply this directly to the lid. It's nice that the doe foot wand is sort of tapered, so I'm just going to apply a little bit on the inner lid, I should say. And then I'm going to blend it out with a flat shader brush. That is stunning. I love this color. I love the creaminess and the consistency. It's really easy to work with. You could stop there, move on, do the rest of your makeup, and it would be a really pretty daytime appropriate look. But I wanna try to use as many of these eyeshadows as possible. So I'm going to take 
a more tapered brush. This is the old eyeshadow, eyeshadow blender brush from Chanel. And I'm going into this last shade, Sangria. And I'm going to use this to add a little depth and dimension to the outer V area. And that's actually going on a lot lighter than I had expected, which is a good thing. I thought it was going to be really deep and dramatic, but it comes off a little bit more purple. And then I'm going to go back quickly with my original fluffy brush and just soften that. I went ahead and cleaned up any fallout from my cheeks, which there was only a small amount. And I must tell you, I have really high expectations for this cream eyeshadow because when I wiped away the arm swatches, the cream foil was the one man left standing. So I have a feeling this is going to be an incredibly long wearing cream eyeshadow, which is great. Because I don't think I mentioned it earlier, this Emphasize Eye Palette, which comes with six different eyeshadows, retails for $46. So it's a really reasonable price point. And now we are going to go in with foundation. So here I'm gonna go ahead and open up this Glass Glow Face, which is a liquid illuminator. But on the website, they refer to this as a face and body gloss, which I thought was really interesting. So it comes in kind of a squeezy tube, but when you open it up, it has a pump on the end. So I'm very excited to try out this texture. This is available in three different shades, a bronze, a clear kind of pearlescent shade, and then this is Prism Rose, which of all of the liquid illuminators I own, I don't have anything in this rosy color. And I think it plays really beautifully with the colors of the eyeshadow. These retail for $32. And according to the website, this is meant to give you a glossy complexion, sort of that glass skin effect. It's multi-purpose glow gel. You can mix it into your foundation, your moisturizer, your primer. You can layer it on top of makeup. Up. So you can really do a lot with this. I own so many liquid illuminators and I love them. I use them a lot over the summer, so I'm excited about this. I'm interested about to feel the texture. Woo! Okay, so that's a very interesting. It's pretty thick. It's sort of a thick, slick gel. Very different from many of the illuminators that I have. Interesting. It almost has a really oily slip, but it's sort of clear and glossy. So I guess it is sort of a face gloss that you can mix in. It's sort of a liquid version that you can use with your other face products. Wow. It's very pretty. When you blend it out, it gives a nice sort of sheer glow. Initially, when I pumped it on my hand, I thought, wow, that's incredibly pigmented. But no, it's sort of different. It sort of has that glassy, wet feel. It feels thick. I'm not sure I would love that all over my face. Well, we're gonna try it. I'm gonna mix it into my foundation and see. Since the glass glow will add radiance, I wanted to use a more matte foundation. So I'm going in with my magic foundation from Charlotte Tilbury that I recently picked up. I will admit guys, I'm a little bit nervous to mix this into my foundation just because it feels almost like a lip gloss. So I'm going to do sort of one and one and a half. That's the proportion I have going on and I'm just going to mix it on the back of my hand with my finger. And it kind of disappeared actually. I'm going to go in with a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So now it has that thick, slightly luminous feel texture.
So you can see the radiance. Oh yeah, it's definitely picking up in the camera, I think. I wasn't sure because the foundation's so matte and as soon as I mixed it on the back of my hand, it was as if the glass glow disappeared. So I wasn't sure if you would really see the radiance. I think the camera's picking it up. Okay, I'm gonna go in with the foundation brush. Here I have one of the old Chanel Duo Fibers. My initial thoughts are that I don't really love it mixed into the foundation. And I will say on the website, it says you can mix it into your moisturizer, mix it into your primer, use it all over the face, the body, go on top of foundation. It does not actually say to mix it into your foundation. That was something that I just assumed you could do because that's how you use most other liquid illuminators. And perhaps it's just not mixing well with this foundation because it is supposed to have a demi matte finish. But I think it's sort of breaking up the product. Like the two liquids don't really mesh well together. So I don't like that one. I don't have as much coverage. I don't think the two work really nicely together. Like they're not laying on the skin very nicely. And I really don't like that glossy, glass, balmy texture all over the face. I think on the body it would be beautiful. I don't like how sticky it feels everywhere. I would maybe put it on top of the foundation, but I'm not really sure I would like it mixed into my moisturizer or primer either. So that's why I'm a little bit confused. I did moisturize my face. I didn't use a primer because I I just wanted this to be sort of the first thing that I went on so that I could really have a good good grasp of how it felt on the skin and perhaps I mean I'm gonna finish I'm gonna go ahead and and set my face with powder I'm gonna do concealer the way I normally would and see if my opinion changes I applied a little bit more foundation on top of what I put down. I went in with my Chanel concealer and I just went in with a little Soleil Tan de Chanel cream bronzer. And since it did recommend mixing into a blush, I'm gonna go ahead and do as the instructions suggested. And I'm going to use my NARS Liquid Orgasm. And I'm going to mix in a little bit of this face glow or glow gloss. What do you call this? Glass glow. <laughs> I'm gonna mix a little bit of this in with my blush and see if that works really nicely. So I'm just gonna tap this on my cheeks. All right, so I am back. My face is almost complete and I have a few thoughts on this Glass Glow Face Illuminator. So I do like the way it looks now. Initially, I was going to go in with this Kevin O'Quan Illuminating Powder, which is sort of a highlight, but it's very subtle and I was gonna use this to set my face to just enhance the glow, but I thought, absolutely not. <laughs> Given the texture, of this glass glow, I don't think it would have looked very nice and I want to give the product an opportunity to really wow me. So I went in instead with the Chanel Loose Powder which has a matte finish and I actually really am starting to love the way this looks mixed into my foundation all over my skin. I do like the way it mixes with the blush. I think it's really pretty but again it does give more of a wet glistening effect versus a luminous kind of shimmery highlighter look the way you typically think of when you think of a liquid illuminator. So because of that thick kind of lip gloss, oil slick, thick feel to it, and that's the best way I can describe it, I think if you suffer from really oily skin or if clogged pores are a huge issue for you, this could be your absolute worst nightmare. Now, if you have normal skin, if you're dry, if you really try to add a healthy, natural looking glow without too much luminosity, this could be perfect for you. It, it really is like the way a face balm or face gloss, the eye gloss type products, 
that's what this feels like except it's for the entire face just so you know <laughs> now because I don't have an illuminator I'm gonna go ahead and tap this on top of my makeup now to finish my highlight which is one of the recommended ways to use it so I'm just gonna sort of tap that on top that looks stunning I mean that is beautiful Wow I think in the future, if I mix it into my foundation, I'll use probably a different foundation, first and foremost. I'll use less product. I think I was scared that I didn't use enough the first time, and so I added more. I think a little bit goes a very long way, given the texture. And also, I thought it was really breaking up on my skin, but full disclosure, I've been using a prescription strength retinol. So my skin was very dry this morning, and I noticed some patches where I was starting to peel. So that could absolutely just be from my retinol and have nothing to do with the product not mixing well with the foundation. So, I mean, that's what happens. It's a first impression. You kind of have to play around with it and... I certainly love the way it looks. I think there are uses for it. But now for this, I'm going to pick up a small precision brush and I'm going into the shade Amethyst and I'm gonna run that underneath my lower lash line. You know I couldn't do an eye look with this palette without using this color. It had to come into place somewhere. So I saved the best for last. I'm just going to very carefully take this underneath. I have one more product to unbox. This is the Glass Glow Lip, which retails for $26. It's infused with antioxidants and vitamin E. You can wear it alone with a neutral lip liner as a lip topper over a lipstick. So I'm really excited. This is also available in the same three shades as the Glass Glow Face. So based on the texture of this, I'm hoping it's not the exact same product in different packaging. But with this one, I got the Crystal Clear. And then you open it up, and you have this really pretty kind of flat doe foot wand. Because it is an iridescent clear, I'm going to put a lipstick on first and then put this on top because I just would never wear that by itself unless it was maybe the prism rose or the bronze might be pretty alone, but I think it'll be best over a lipstick. So I'm going to go in with Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury. This has become one of my favorite nude lipsticks. And I know it's been around forever and it's been so popular and here I am just jumping on the bandwagon. I do like the way matte lipsticks look, but I just don't really love the way they feel, and I always feel so much better with a gloss on top, so I know it's so trendy to do matte lips, but I just can never keep them matte. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in now with my lip gloss. I don't wanna mess up the wand, so I'm going to actually put a little bit of this on my finger and just tap it on. It's really pretty. It's like a pink iridescent. Oh, it's like blue iridescent. And this is the complete look. This was so much fun getting to play with these products. I feel like I was really surprised by some things that don't usually surprise me. I love, love, love this eyeshadow palette. It's really beautiful. The colors are stunning. I like this particular shade range that I got, the one that's called As Seen In. They do have other ones that are more brown, and then I think there's a smokier palette option as well. I really love this rose gold cream foil. This is something that I imagine I'll use up right away. But this palette is very pretty because I don't own anything like it. I think the shadows were very silky, easy to blend. They go on really smoothly. A little bit of fallout, 
which I've been so spoiled using my Chanel Lee Beige eyeshadow palette that I forgot what Fallout is even like <laughs> because it, it just really does not produce much. But this is still very pretty. I do like these shades. So this is something that I will be using a lot. I think you can get day or night looks out of it too. And the compact is just very beautiful. It's a stunning, stunning product. This Glass Glow Face. This through me. I was expecting it to be like many of the other liquid illuminators that I own and play with often and it was not anything like it. It truly is more of a face gloss. It gives you that glass skin wet look. So it feels a little bit sticky tacky. It doesn't dry down. It's going to remain sticky like that. Not the worst thing in the world if you're just going to do a little bit of highlight on the cheeks down the bridge of your nose but if you are going to do what it suggests on the website which is to mix it in with your primer or mix it into your moisturizer i would maybe be a little bit light-handed especially at first and then we have the lip gloss the lip gloss is beautiful it has antioxidants vitamin e there's not much you can ask for the colors are really pretty and i think this is more of a lip topper it has a beautiful iridescent glow but it's not really detectable especially when you wear that over a lipstick but it feels very smooth i like that it has a little bit of glow to it but it's not chunky or glittery so this is something i will use a lot over the summer and that completes today's unboxing and first impressions video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me any of your comments or your questions down below. I love hearing from you guys, so let me know what you think of the finished look, any of these pieces individually. Overall, I must say I'm really happy with the way the look turned out, but I'm excited to continue playing around with everything and sort of tweak the application process until it is perfection. As always, I will be linking these as well as everything else that I use today on my face down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.